All right, everyone, welcome to another free webinar brought to you by danielanswers.com. And if you haven't been to that new website, please come and check it out. There's lots there for everyone. That's danielanswers.com. Now, our title for today is, as you many of you know, how to eliminate stress from the inside out. A bit different to how we're used to dealing with stress. And all of us, you know, we all we all face stresses in our life and and we deal with it in different ways. I mean, some of us deal with stress um, through drinking. <laughs> some of us deal with stress through smoking. Um, some of us deal with stress by eating. Who who deals with stress by eating? Is Am I the only one there? No, anyone? Anyone? Nice bit of chocolate or a cookie or something. Ah, uh, yeah, we love it, don't we? <laughs> this is great scene, Despicable Me, where he says, um, Gru actually says, you know, when he, they've been picking on him for his weight and said, no, I, I, I choose to eat instead of looking at my problems. And it just really sums it up beautifully. So we all deal with stress in different ways, like drugs, alcohol, shopping. Anyone? Anyone deal with stress by a bit of retail therapy? Yeah, got to love. And and now with, you know, Amazon and all these sites, God, it makes it so easy to get that retail therapy, doesn't it? It's just so accessible right there, dangerously so. Yeah. So, you know, and, and some of us meditate and do yoga. And we've, we've learned to deal with stress in more productive ways. Exercise, actually take a holiday. And there's some really powerful ways of dealing with stress. But these are coping mechanisms and these are external actions that we're, they're, they're really responses to stress in our lives. Okay, we're reacting, we have stress and then we respond to that stress. But today we're going to be doing something quite a bit different. I'm not here to go into listing all these other coping mechanisms. No, we are going to look at being more proactive about stress to the point of eliminating it from occurring in the first place. So this is a very proactive approach rather than how do we respond to stress? Let's go to the beginning of it, where it all began, what's at the root cause and where that and, and how do we resolve it at that the genesis level, if you like. Now, am I promising you'll never be stressed again? No, I would love to, uh, I'd love to promise that to you guys. And it's a little bit unrealistic to, to, to address in, in such a short amount of time. But after this event, you're gonna notice a huge shift in, in understanding stress. And we're gonna eliminate a really big chunk of it. So I'm not promising we're gonna eliminate all of it, but I'm definitely gonna be helping you eliminate a lot of it, and I'm gonna be giving you the ingredients on how you can progressively eliminate it from your life, and you're gonna love this, okay? So, now, you know, for me personally, I was raised by a mother who was just a stress head. She was in constant stress, constant fear and, and depression. And I inherited, so to speak, a lot of those traits, especially the need to stress, okay? And, and many of you who have been exposed to frantic parents and hurrying and hurrying, we take that on as a way of being and we're taught why, why we need to stress and why we need to panic. But the point is I'm very familiar with this topic and I'm very familiar to uh, what it is to live with feeling constantly stressed. And it, it's just, we all know what that's like. We don't, want to, we don't want to continue on, you know, victim to this level of stress and anxiety. So it's time to, time to do something powerful. So yeah, it's been a huge battle for me and I felt it was exactly time to go in look at the answers from within and see what, 
what can we do about this? And it was, it was time to share that with you guys. So everything I'm gonna be sharing as always is from the answers within. I never share opinions or, or any of these things. It's just what is truth? And I'm gonna be sharing that with you guys soon. So the process for today is number one, we're going to look at what we think is causing us stress. All right, there's all these things going on in our life and we know we react to that and we know we react to that and that causes stress, but not quite the causes that we may think. So we're gonna start with what we think is causing us stress. Then part two, we're gonna look at what is actually causing us stress. And then part three, we're gonna look at how to heal these actual causes of stress. All right, so at the cause level. There are three areas we're gonna go through. So before we get started, just a little word of advice. And that is to pay very close attention. Now, some of you on the call have uh, joined me for the Truth Course. Some of you have been part of Read the Mind Lies book. And this is very much in that vein. So we're gonna look at a lot of non-truths and then we're gonna look at a lot of truth. So a little bit different to our journey with the Akashic Records where we kind of sat back and it was all very passive. This requires you to really pay attention and just, just persist with me, just keep going. Let's just be with me the whole journey even if at times you might feel reactions coming up and, oh, I want to switch off. Um, if you do feel that, that's perfect. Just don't listen to it. It's just the mind, the ego preserving itself, going, hey, we don't want this level of breakthrough in your life, so we're going to make you drowsy, we're going to make you feel distracted, and all these kinds of things. So if you do go there and like, oh, this is tough, just keep going. Keep going. There's a breakthrough coming, all right? So this is certainly worth your undivided attention. So being very, you know, it's, it's worth if you've got a pen and paper, that might be very useful. You wanna take some notes. Um, and for some of you that might help you stay awake. But uh, the next thing to be, be, I guess, conscious of is um, there's this underlying theme behind all this. Yes, it's stress and yes, it's about eliminating stress. But there's another theme to keep an eye out, and that is that things are very different to how they appear, all right? So even though I might say things that sound familiar, don't switch off thinking you know what I'm about to say next, because the chances are you don't. Just be very open to what we think we're stressing about, what we think is this, and what we think is that is actually very different to what's truthfully going on. Is everyone good with that? Yeah, you're all ready to go? Everyone paying very close attention? All right, let's get right into it. So we're starting off with, as I said, the causes of stress. And when we start with getting to the cause, and this is how we do everything, all the healing work we do, is we always go to the cause because once we know the cause, then it's easy to know the cure. And the other thing I find is when we can bring to light what we believe or feel we are reacting to, what we feel is the source of stress, and we bring it to our awareness, it actually loses much of its power over us. So that in itself is a healing. And, and bringing things to our awareness is, is often 50% of the healing, sometimes even 90% of the healing. So just being aware of something who has us really release it. So that's a very, this next step is very important. So just learning these sources will be a big help in alleviating your stress. And you may even feel as we go through part number one, you're like, oh, well, yeah, I hadn't really pinpointed that. And now that you have, I'm starting to feel better. Well, you might feel worse that I've highlighted it. We'll see. <laughs> Okay, so let's explore some of these as, as many of them may be a surprise, but we'll start with some of the obvious ones. Okay, so number one, source of stress. 
not necessarily in this order, but it could very well be, financial stresses. Who experiences financial stresses? Oh, isn't that a big one? Unbelievable, right? Well, now on the surface, these financial stresses, you know, they feel like we are worried we are going to run out of money and that at some point we are going to have the, we're going to have to suffer the consequences of what that brings, right? And when you think about it, it you know, what comes to mind is these financial stresses, well, they could, they could lead to shame, couldn't they? If we run out of money, can't pay our bills, get kicked out of our house, going to lose our phone or our car, or whatever it might be, you know, it could lead to shame, humiliation, and even the stress or fear of losing one's home or car, just that in itself, that's stressful, isn't it? You know, and this is, this is a really big one for so many people and can be crippling, um, as, as no doubt you guys will agree. So number one big source of stress is financial worry around we're going to run out of money, we're going to be humiliated, we're going to be in shame, blah, 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 can be very crippling. So what we're going to do now, before we go into, into that, we're going to go through all the different sources and then we're going to go a little bit deeper with each one. Now, the next cause of stress is the fear around or the worry around that something bad might happen to me. All right. Could be a horrible illness. It could be dying. It could be an attack, a car accident, breaking a bone. Um, is this anyone present to that for themselves? You're worried something's going to happen to you. I might get sick. I might get in a car accident. Someone might attack me. Is that something for everyone? No, some people, not so much. Yep. That bean is nodding. Yep. Some of you, we all have our different pressure points. But for those of you who are not saying yes to that, that's fantastic. <laughs> All right. So worrying that something bad might happen to us is a big cause of stress. Lots of talks about terminal illnesses and all these things and terrorist attacks and, and uh, certain governments in place, you know, we can be a bit worried. Let's go to the third source. The next source of stress is what I call looking bad. Now, obviously, some of these stresses are worse than others. But this is the fear and worry that people around you may lose respect for you, no longer admire you, or ultimately no longer see you as the great person you believe you should be seen as. I call it falling from grace, so to speak. Is anyone conscious to this one as a stress? Yep. Not having people be impressed with you or recognize you, respect or admire you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And I mean, it's funny when you compare that, when you look at that compared to oh, some kind of horrible illness or accident, yeah, you think it's a little bit, you know, very minor, but that's actually a very full on stress for many of us. So let's keep going, shall we? Number four. Very big one here, fear of failure. Now, for those that are quite ambitious in life, and more often than not, this is actually the driving force behind the need to achieve. A lot of ambition is actually coming from fear of a failure. I need to achieve to compensate for my deep fear of failure. Now, this on the surface, you know, is the fear and worry that I'll get something wrong, that I'll ruin my life and destroy, you know, it goes deeper, not only ruin my life, but I'll destroy any chance at happiness that I thought I had. Can anyone relate to this one? Fear of failure, making the wrong decision that turns out to ruin everything. And then it dives into the wonderful financial stresses of, oh, now I'm gonna be stressed over money because I'm gonna make horrible decisions. Anyone present to that? Mm, it's a big one, isn't it? Ruining our life by making terrible decisions. Fear of failure. What will I screw up next? What will I get wrong next? Where will my decisions lead me next? A very intense fear. <laughs> Let's keep going. 
But now we're going to go into some more subtle ones. What about the stress coming from worrying whether you'll be liked? That people around you will one day figure out what you've been hiding this whole time. That you've been conning everyone. That you are actually not likable. And this is a secret you've been worried everyone will someday catch on to. Everyone's going to one day figure out you're not actually likable. Anyone got that? Anyone present to that? Hmm. Yeah, some of you are admitting it. Some of you aren't. It's, it's this weird kind of fear around, you know, I've got to keep a facade up. I can't show people who I really am because, God, once they figure that out, they'll never like me. It's a big one. Big one. Okay, let's keep going. Another subtle one. The fear and worry that I am not who I think I am. And if I'm not who I think I am, I will not get to live the life I hoped I would. Now, this really is the onset of an identity crisis. And believe you me, I've been through it. Uh, it, it, it's all about fearing that you will discover that you are lesser than the person you believe you are. What if I'm not as talented as I thought I was? What if I'm not as smart? What if I'm not as capable? What if I'm not as wise? Okay. So, and what that means is, then if, if I'm not who I think I am, then am I able to create the life I want? Probably not. If I'm not who I think I am, if I'm, like, if I'm less than I think I am, then I'm likely to create a lesser life than what I'd hoped and dreamed for myself. Anyone present to that? What if you're not as good as you always thought you were? It means everything you'd ever dreamed about your life, it's just an illusion, right? It's not going to happen. <laughs> Who feels that one go right in? Whoa, uh-oh, what if I'm not as good as I thought I was? Hmm. All right, we're going to go to a final one here. It's number seven. What about this? The more I age the more unattractive, the more undesirable I will become or am becoming. I don't want to feel unwanted. And worst of all, I don't want to feel unloved. I'm petrified that nobody will love me. Who is conscious to that one? The older I get, the less desirable, the less attractive, the less likable, the less interesting. Who's got that going on? Come on, the cosmetic industry thrives on that one. Come on, plastic surgery this is, is based on this fear. Mm. Very interesting. So there's seven of some of the biggest sources of stress that are in our lives. Not necessarily all of them, but some of the biggest ones. Did anyone feel less stress that we brought that up to your awareness now? Does anyone feel a little bit, okay. Uh, did anyone feel more stressed <laughs> that we brought this up? Yeah. Well, what you're really feeling is not that we've added stress to you. We've just brought your awareness to what's already present. All right, this is what's ticking away in the background. So let's get into the next phase. <laughs> well, of course, there's more like, am I being a good enough parent and what's going to happen to my children? But you're going to find that even though we've covered these seven, we're actually about to cover pretty much all of them without needing to cover all of them. But it gives us a very good a little batch to work with. All right. So 
So now that we've looked at what appears to be the source of our stress and what we think we're reacting to, I mean, if I was to say that's the source of your stress, isn't it? I mean, you, you, you go, yeah, that's what, I, what causes me stress. But it's not. <laughs> I'm here to say it's not what's causing you stress. So let's go a little bit deeper. This is where things get particularly interesting. Time for some magic. Because as I said, things aren't what they appear. So let's go behind the scenes, behind these sources of stress and see what we're really getting stressed about. And then after that, we're gonna get into the healing of it. So let's look back at all these stresses that we've covered so far. The first one we spoke about was financial stress. And as far as we were concerned, we were worried we're going to run out of money. And we were worried of what that actually means, losing a house and losing a car and all this stuff. But that's actually not what we're stressed about. We think it's what is the bulk of that stress, but it isn't. So what is? The biggest stress as far as financial goes is this. I am worried that I have been irresponsible, even careless or stupid. That's actually what we're stressed about. Yes, it's scary that we might lose our house. Yes, it's scary we can't pay our bills. But there's things that are far more stressful. And that is to think badly of ourselves. To think we have been irresponsible, careless, or even stupid, much more stressful. We hate thinking badly of ourselves. It's a huge source of stress. And as I said, even worse than running out of money. That's what's really behind it. Let's look at number two. I'm worried something bad will happen to me. Could be an accident, could be an illness. Now, of course, there's the obvious worry here of not wanting to endure pain or suffering. But again, you'll be amazed to discover there is something even more terrifying underneath this. And that is, I am worried that I haven't and I'm not being careful with myself. That I'm somehow being careless and irresponsible with myself. We thought we were worried about pain and dying, but it's actually about thinking of ourselves as careless or irresponsible. Now, who can feel that? When you think of yourself as potentially careless or irresponsible, who feels that stress surging through their body? It's actually worse than what you thought you were being stressed about. Yeah, this is what's underneath. The surface stuff, just an illusion. Where the real stress is, is right in there. We'll keep going, okay? Now, number three. Three was the worry that I'll look bad to others, that I'll fall from grace. Now again, this is a very real concern on the surface. But if we dig deeper, you will find there is a scarier fear underneath. And it is this. I am worried I'll stop seeing myself as great. And worse, I am stressed because I am worried I won't like myself. That I won't like myself if everyone else doesn't like me. So here we were thinking, oh my God, what, 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 uh, what if people don't like me anymore? And what if I fall from grace? What we're really worried about is not falling from grace in other people's eyes. We're worried about falling from grace in our own eyes. That is far scarier and far more stressful. Okay, everyone keeping up so far? Everyone good? Things aren't what they appear. So, 
Now you might be starting to see a little pattern here, but I'm gonna keep going. Fear of failure, number four. When we looked at this, the source of stress on the surface was getting things wrong, screwing up our lives, making the wrong decision. Now that definitely is terrifying to most of us, no question, but it's not nearly as terrifying as what lies underneath. And that is, what if I hate myself for ruining my life, for screwing it all up? I am so scared of reprimanding myself. It scares me half to death, quite literally too. Fear of reprimanding yourself. Who's mean to themselves when they screw things up? Oh, come on, people, put your hands up. <laughs> and how nasty can we be? Oh, my God. The things we say to ourselves, you screwed up again, I can't believe you've done it again, and F this, F that. The things that come out, well, not even things that stay in, that we say and that we feel. You know, what's that feeling? The minute you feel you've lost your wallet, what goes through your body in that moment? You think you're getting stress that, oh my God, I've lost my money, my license. That's not the stress. The stress is what you were calling yourself in that moment. Oh my God, you dick, you this, you that, you blah, blah, blah. That's the stress. I was sitting on our, on the, doing some work on our YouTube channel the other night. I haven't told Tamara this. And I had to delete something. And there was this moment where I thought I had deleted our entire YouTube channel. Oh my God, the, 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 the 10 years of videos the, the, the sensation in my body, I think, was, was worse than, you know, seeing an oncoming car heading towards me. It was so intense. And when I looked at it, it was just what you say to yourself if you'd done that. And fortunately, I had not done that. And I still need to do some clearing around that because I was on YouTube the other night and that fear was still palpable. So I need to, I need to look at that. But that was full on. So... What we think is happening isn't actually what's happening. We're so worried about this self-reprimanding you know, that we were taught from mum and dad, you drop a glass, you do something wrong, what happens next? Whack! Either verbally or physically that we've learned to do that to ourselves. Whack! As if by some miracle that reprimand actually is going to make sure we're better off because of it. Mm, doesn't happen that way. Doesn't happen. Maybe if we received love after making an accident or mistake, things may have gotten better. But the reprimand, yeah, that doesn't work. So there we go. So that was what's behind the fear of failure. Not so much fear of screwing up my life. I'm more afraid of what I will say and do to myself if I do screw up or make another, bloody hell, another bad decision. How many terrible decisions can one person make in their life? And the reprimand that comes along with that. Intense stuff. Mm, you can feel that YouTube thing there. <laughs> okay. Now that may have helped to have you guys see a bit of a pattern emerging. We'll see. I'll keep going. All right. Number five. This fear about worry about not being liked. Now, this is the one about that everyone will eventually figure out I'm not who they think. I'm actually not likable whatsoever and you've got it all wrong and I've been hiding it from you this whole time, but sooner or later you're going to figure it out. Now, again, on this surface, the stress seems to be coming from other people realizing that we're not worth liking. And all of a sudden, it's unanimous Everyone realizes, boom, 
yeah, I don't know what we were friends with that guy for or that girl. It's just not worth like. They're not likable, basically. They're not likable. So that's what it looks like it's coming from. And it's upsetting, of course, that it's a concept. But could there be something even scarier? Yes, it is this. What if, what if I discover that I'm unlikable? What if the thing that I've been fearing about myself my whole life is actually true? That I am somehow not okay, rotten, imperfect, unusable, unwanted. What if this one thing that I've been worried about my whole life, that I am unappealing, unlikable, what if I'm even disgusting, what if that turns out to be true and it gets worse what if I was <laughs> what if I was actually right all this time to dislike myself what if I was actually right to dislike myself for all those of you out there who are hiding this dislike, covering it up with all these other things in life, what if I realize I'm actually not likable and what I've been worrying was always true? Anyone aware of that? Some of you, a little bit. What if I'm right that there's something wrong with me? Mm, stressful, very, very stressful stuff. Let's keep going. I want to get you into healing as fast as possible here. I'm keeping you in this little murky pond of stress. So number six, who I think I am isn't who I really am. That was a big source of stress. So on the surface, the stress is coming from the worry that if I am worse, if I am lesser than who I think I am, then I'm going to create a lesser life. That I'm going to be incapable of creating a good life and I'm stuck having a crappy life. That's pretty stressful, isn't it? To... To know that you are going to create continually a worse or lesser life than what you'd planned for. Very stressful. But is that what we are really worried about? Now let's dig deeper. And this one's a little bit more subtle. The real fear, the real source of stress is, I will discover that I'm hated. That I will find something about myself that I hate. So remember we were worried about what if, what if I'm not who I think I am? It's not just that we're lesser. We're actually worried that we're going to find something about ourselves that we are going to hate. And if I do this, if I find this, this will stop me having the life I want. There's some fundamental problem that I hate about myself that's going to ruin my life. If I hate myself, I will be stuck hating myself and then hating myself over and over again for the life that I'm creating in this vicious cycle. I will be stuck hating myself, hating the life that I'm creating hating myself for creating that life that I hate, then hating myself for, for hating myself and hating myself for creating a worse life and then hating myself for hating the life I'm creating and being stuck in there. It's this horrific, vicious cycle. Very stressful, isn't it? Far more stressful than what we thought we were. Oh, what if I'm not who I am? Yeah, that's the nice way of putting it. It's not what we're being stressed about. We're worried about hating something about ourselves and hating the life that we're capable or incapable of creating. 
All right, let's get to number seven. Let's do this. So this one was about the more I age, the more unattractive and undesirable I become. Of course, on the surface, we are petrified that nobody will love us anymore. That we won't be found attractive or desirable and we will be unlovable. Feels a bit stressful. But what's really underneath this, and this is where some of the magic gets revealed. The real worry is actually I will get to a point where I won't even be able to love myself and what I see. I won't even be able to love myself and what I see. And there's more. Then I won't be able to use what everyone thinks of me as a way to love myself. If I can't use what everyone thinks of me as a way to love myself, what will I have left to love myself with? If I can't even love what I see, what I am, who I am, nobody else is left to love me, how can I use, what will I use to love myself? I will be left with nothing. Anyone aware of that? That's big stuff, isn't it? And you see this a lot in, in Hollywood. You see these actors that are in these big shows. The show is the biggest thing ever for like five years, 10 years. The minute the show is over, these actors go into this free fall. They're no longer the subject of, of, of every media they're no longer in the spotlight they go into drugs they go into alcohol because it has been there propping them up going everybody loves me i can love myself they love me i can love myself and the minute that's taken away they're left with holy shit <laughs> nobody loves me how am i going to love myself nobody it, all of a sudden it's revealed it's revealed that they never loved themselves. They felt good. They had lots of money, lots of attention. So that's what this one's very much about is what if all these things that I used to prop me up with aren't there anymore? Very scary. All right. I'll be left with nothing. Now... Has anyone seen a pattern emerging in amongst all of that? Don't worry, you can't get it wrong. <laughs> you don't need to fear that anymore. All right, whether you did or whether you didn't, I'm about to reveal all. So we've looked at what we think causes us stress, what we think we're reacting to. And now we've looked at what, we're, what is really causing us stress. And now it's time to look at the healing of it. And part of this is to look at the pattern. The pattern. Because this is where the pattern fully reveals itself in point number seven. And it is this. Despite all these different sources of stress, and they have been very different, haven't they? from financial stress, to dying, to looking bad, to aging, they're covering everything, right? So despite all these different sources of stress, they all come back to one ultimate fear. Are you guys ready to learn what that is? Here it is. What if after all is said and done, after all those things, what if I won't be able to love myself anymore? That is the source of stress. Not the finances, not people's opinions, not the aging, not the screwing up life. What if 
I won't be able to love myself anymore. Isn't that huge? We have been compensating in our life, trying to make as much money as possible, trying to work hard so we earn respect, trying to make ourselves look great and be healthy so that lasts. We've been doing all these things because we think the sources of stress are all those points listed. When behind all of that, our biggest fear has been this one constant. What if I won't be able to love myself anymore? So, now that we've gotten to the cause of stress, we can get to the cure. Who is ready for that? Has everyone been keeping up all right on that? Yep. A little bit? Yep. All right, so now, just to paraphrase, what we're dealing with is if our biggest stress isn't money, isn't looking good, isn't all this stuff, if our biggest stress is fearing we can't love ourselves anymore, what do we do about it? Let's go a little bit deeper. And clearly you can start to see that when we peel back all these layers, instead of dealing with 10 or 12 or 20 or 30 different sources of stress, we're dealing with one. We only actually have to deal with one. Now the question is, what do we do about it? Clearly, we need to learn how to love ourselves no matter what, don't we? That's the bottom line. We need to learn how to love ourselves no matter what we do, no matter what we look like, no matter what we create in our life, or no matter what we don't create. That we must love ourselves unconditionally. The way a parent loves their child. That's what this is all coming down to. Eliminating stress is coming down to loving ourselves unconditionally. No matter what we do, no matter what we create, we're going to love ourselves. Now, of course, learning to love ourselves unconditionally is quite the journey. But I'm here to help, to fast track this journey. Which brings us to part three. So, it's really time to listen extra carefully because this is where we're going to go into the fix. So, so far we've been covering the non-truths. Now, I know some of them feel stressful. It's because we think they're truth. But they are all the non-truth. And like I said before, if you've been on the truth course with me or you've read my lies, we always look at what the non-truth is and so we can look at what the actual truth is. And it's very much in alignment with that. So what is the fix? Now, as I said, listen very carefully, okay? So we're now gonna go through each point from one to seven, looking at the non-truth and then looking at the truth. All right, everyone with me? Good. Good, good. So number one, finances. The question is this. Now, be honest with yourself. Can I love myself even if I have been irresponsible with money? Can I love myself if I overlooked something important with money and my life? Now, what's your first reaction to that? Is that a yes or a no? Because when I did this, it was a flat out no. When I asked, can I love myself if I'm irresponsible with money? It was just a no. Because I haven't been able to. No. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> no. So, this is where we bring in the truth. So whether you have got a yes or no, 
Fantastic if you're able to give yourself a yes. And if you haven't, we're gonna go deeper. And this will still help you even if you got the yes. So where we get to now, if the answer is no, okay? And the chances are, even if you felt yes in that moment, that it is an underlying no, because if you really were okay with that, it wouldn't be a source of stress. Okay, makes sense? So if you are able to love yourself despite being irresponsible with money and overlooking something, then financial stress, it just wouldn't be there for you. Yeah, so the fact that you, it's still, that you're coming up with a yes now is awesome, means you've moved a lot. But let's keep going. So how do we get to a yes? Okay, it's this. If I have been irresponsible, it's not because I was trying to be, but because I was trying so hard not to be. Let me read that again. If I've been irresponsible, it's not because I was trying to be, but because I was trying so hard not to be. Now that's worth loving, isn't it? Can you say yes to that? Yep. You can now love yourself if you've been irresponsible because you weren't trying to be. It just happened or looked like it happened, but you actually ended up there because you were trying so hard not to be irresponsible. And that's worth loving, isn't it, Janie? <laughs> yes, is. So just take a moment and just process that. I can love myself because I was trying not to be irresponsible. And that is truth. Trying not to be irresponsible is worth loving. Whether it worked out or not, that is worth loving. So I can love myself for that. Even if I've been irresponsible or will continue to be, it will be only because I'm trying not to be. And I will love myself for that. Hmm, that feels good. Feels like everyone's, most of you are letting that one in. Yeah, Neil's fighting that one a little bit, but you know, it's all right. Okay, are we ready to go to the next truth? Number two, can I love myself even if I haven't been careful with myself or careless to the point of allowing something bad to happen to me? Remember, this was the worry, the fear, the stress around illness and an accident or something bad happening. So the question, can I love myself even if I haven't been careful with myself or careless to the point of allowing something bad to happen to me? Now, for me, on the surface, the answer was no, I cannot. Yeah. I didn't experience much unconditional love when I was a child, and that's where I learned it from, as many of you didn't. So the answer for me was, I cannot. No, not going to happen. But we can always get to, some, to a yes with some truth. So how do we get there? It's like this. It is this. Realize you didn't allow something bad to occur out of spite for yourself, but through not knowing who you really are. That's the truth. You didn't allow something bad to occur because you were trying to hurt yourself or out of spite. It simply occurred because you didn't know who you really are. Now, not knowing who you really are isn't something to anger about, is it? You don't know who you really are. You can't hate yourself for that. And you can't withhold love because of that. Not knowing who you really are is something you can quite easily love yourself for, isn't it? 
I didn't know who I really am. I'm learning that. And I can love that, that I am learning that. Can you guys love that about yourself? Yeah, it's not something to withhold love for. Good. Feels like that one went in quicker than the previous. Number three. Can I love myself if people stop seeing me as great? Or worse, what if I start agreeing with them and stop seeing myself as great? Now, can we love ourselves if we stop seeing ourselves as great? Now, that seems pretty tricky, doesn't it? If I stop seeing myself as great, how can I still love myself if I'm not great? It's a hard one. And for some of you, it might likely be a no. So how can we get to a yes? All right, here's some truth. No longer seeing myself as great isn't something to hate. Because it's happening because you care how you see yourself. It's a tricky one. So let me go through that again. Not, no longer seeing myself as great isn't something to hate because it's happening because you care how you see yourself. So can you love yourself even though you still care how you see yourself? So this is a need. When we go into the truth course, this is exactly what we deal with. There's a need to see yourself in a particular way. I still care how I see myself. There's still a need there. Question is, can you love yourself because you still care how you see yourself? Can you? Can you love yourself even though you've still got that? Yes, you can. Totally can. Good. Let that one sit. Let's just take a moment for that one to sit. Yes, I can love myself, even though I still care how I see myself. That's quite a rabbit hole, that one, if you choose to go down that path. Still caring how I see myself, needing to see myself in a particular way. Very interesting rabbit hole, that one. Well, let's just baby steps for now, shall we? Well, he's actually quantum leaps, so quantum leaps for now. All right. You can love yourself on that one. Even if people stop seeing you as great, you can still love yourself because you still care how you see yourself. It's about you and you can love yourself. All right, number four. Things are about to get even deeper. Now, we are up to the stress of ruining our life, of completely screwing it up. And worse, as we discovered, reprimanding ourselves for it. Can we possibly love ourselves after screwing up our life? Can we love ourselves instead of reprimanding ourselves? That's the question. Now, for me, that was a no. If I screw up my life, can I love myself? No. <laughs> but there is a way to get to a yes. And it is to realize, it's a big one, pay very close attention. It is to realize it was never my life in the first place. It was never my life. It's not mine. Life is life. Life is life. It's not my life. How can I screw up life other than through reprimanding myself rather than loving myself? So what there is to love is reaching the realization this isn't my life. I am life. And that is totally lovable about me. 
having that realization, this isn't my life, that I am life, reaching that, that's totally lovable. Can you see that? Yeah. Some of you, yes. Some of you a bit over the head. It's pretty deep stuff. We are conditioned to believe this is our life. This is our lifetime. Taking ownership. This is mine. This is, I've got to make the most out of it. I've got to strive and thrive. And life, life is just happening. It's not yours. Yours is based on the identity. The identity isn't real. The identity is what's making you reprimand yourself. That's not real. Don't reprimand yourself. Love yourself because you are the whole of life. Love that you've reached that realization. Even if you're not conscious right now, don't worry. It's going in. Very powerful stuff. All right. Love that you've just discovered you are life. That's a big one. Okay. Number five. This is a tough one. Can I still love myself if I discover what I've always feared? That I am unlikable, rotten at the core, something wrong with me, and there always will be. Can I still love myself if I discover something completely wrong with me? It's likely to be a no, if you listen to the mind. And if it isn't, it's still pretty challenging to get to the yes. Unless, of course, you come to realize that those that don't like you, and even that which you find unlikable, is the fear and worry of being unlikable. Let me take you through that one again. So the only thing unlikable is worrying if you are unlikable. There's nothing else about you that is unlikable. That is the only thing, is you worrying that you are unlikable. So realize that worry, which is unlikable, is not at your core. It's not you. It's not what makes you you, does it? A worry, you can't say worry, that worry is me. Worrying that I'm unlikable, that is my true self. You can't say that. So realize the worry is not at your core. It's not what makes you you, but rather it's what has been hiding the real you. Can you love yourself for that realization? Realizing the thing that makes me unlikable is worrying whether I'm unlikable. That was never me in the first place. It's been hiding the real me. And now I've reached that realization that I can love. Yes? Can you love that? Of course you can. Of course you can. At least I've had this realization now that I'm not the worries. At least I've had it now, not later in life. That's another, a whole nother reason to love. Phew, thank God I've had it now. Could have gone on more and more, longer and longer, and never realized that. Okay, let me check in. Is everyone keeping up? Some of you are. This is big stuff. It's deep stuff. Truth is big. But don't worry, it's all coming in. Good. Number six. This is a tough one. I'm worried. I am not who I think I am. I am worried that I'll create a lesser life than I aspire to have. Even worse, I am worried that I secretly hate myself. 
Now the question of course is, can I love myself if I hate myself? That's a tough one. Or better stated, can I love myself if I discover that I've been secretly hating myself this whole time? It's difficult, isn't it? Hmm. How can we get to a yes? Because on the surface, you might say, well, if I hate myself, how can I love myself? That might be a no. Well, let's get to a yes. The first thing to realize is if I have been secretly hating myself, it's only because I didn't realize there was never a self. If I have been hating myself, it's because I never realized there isn't a self. What I have been hating is the thoughts I believed were about me. I'm not good enough. I'm not this. I'm not attractive. I'm not smart. I'm not good with money. I always fail. I'm clumsy. Blah, 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 blah. What I have been hating is the thoughts I believed were about me. What I have been calling myself. Now, what we've all been calling ourselves. These are just ideas, concepts. We go, yeah, that's me. Yep, that's me. No, it's not. There is not a self. There never was. Little did I realize that all these thoughts I believe were about me were never about me. But rather, they were who I was afraid I was becoming. So all these hating thoughts are all about who I was afraid I was becoming. They weren't ever about me. So all these ideas and belief systems and concepts you have, these self-concepts, they were never about you. They were only about who you were afraid you were becoming. They are all fears and none are truth. The truth is, I was never becoming what I feared. I was never becoming what I feared. I just started to believe I was what I feared. That's all that's happened. I've never ever been all these self-doubting, all these labels, definitions, beliefs, parameters, concepts, ideas. I've never been any of those things. You have never been them. You just started to believe that you were becoming them, that you were them. So here's what you can love. Love that what you hated was never you. Love that what you hated was never you. Okay? How did everyone go with that? Big. All right, who's ready for seven? We're going to complete. We're getting to the completion. Number seven. This is a biggie. The stress here is about getting to a point where not even I could love what I have become. I have aged. I have changed. My hair is different or less. I have wrinkles. My body is not what it used to be. I am unattractive, undesirable. What if I can't even love what I have become? Question, of course, is can you love yourself despite these physical changes that you have undergone? Many would say no. But getting to a yes is definitely achievable. We blame ourselves for all the aging believing it's all our fault. I made bad choices along the way, is the words we cry. Consider that choice was an illusion. It's not something you ever had. Now, of course, to do things differently, in many times you would. There are many things that we would do differently. But that's the mind game, believing you knew then, in the past, what you know now. 
Now you can see what you would have done differently. Believing you could see that then, a complete fallacy. You couldn't. If you could see the way you see now back then, you would have taken a very different path in some situations, the ones that needed it. So what there is to love is that you are still here, alive and becoming well. Now, you think you began well. We think we started off well and that we've gotten worse. But again, that's another illusion. The truth is <clears throat> we began worse and we are getting well. We began not knowing what we know now. We began entrenched in beliefs, in doubt, without wisdom, without guidance. And now we have those things. We are far better off in the ultimate sense than we ever were. So we think we began well and have gotten worse. And that's where that stress is. Oh my God, look what I've done to myself. But the truth is, we began worse. And now we are getting well. You know more now than you ever have. You have grown more than you ever did. And that's the gift of still being here. That you have become even better than you ever were. But there's more. Truth is, you've never hated what you have become. You hated how you began. So now the steps to the yes are quite simple. It's to realize this truth. I love that I have grown into what I am. For I am more each day than I ever was. And that's lovable, isn't it? I love that I have grown into what I am, for I am more each day than I ever was. And that's lovable. I have always loved myself. That's what I am. Nothing will ever change that. Because I am sublime. There we have it, ladies and gentlemen. The power of truth. The power of truth to set you all free. Learning to love yourself unconditionally is the mightiest, most powerful ways to eliminate stress in your life. No matter what the source, come back to, can I love myself? And clearly, we can. Even in the face of, can I love myself if I hate myself? We could still find truth and love ourselves. Now, it's going to take some time for a lot of what we've done today to integrate. So just allow it to process through you. And you are now going to be so much more aware as you feel stress. You'll be like, what's really going on here? Where am I worried I'm not going to love myself? What am I really worried about here? That's right. Let's get to some truth. Having said all that, what we've done today will eliminate a lot of the stress out of your life, which is a wonderful, wonderful gift. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that all goes for you guys. I know for me, it's really been miraculous. Absolutely, no question. Which is why I wanted to share it with everyone. Now, of course, if you guys get to the place of, oh, I cannot get to exactly what I'm getting stressed about or I'm unable to move past it and see what the truth is, then book in with me. Come on danielanswers.com and I will help and give you those truths. That's exactly what that website is there for. As we move forward now, you're starting to get a feel for how powerful truth is. And the truth heals all. 
So of course, if you haven't got your Mind Lies book or if you haven't done the truth course and you feel, you, 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 you felt, hey, I like this truth stuff today. Was that, anyone, was that a first time for anyone to be exposed to that kind of workings of non-truth and truth? Some of you know a little bit. If you love it, and I always say, if you're addicted to truth, I'm a bit addicted to truth. If you're going to be addicted to something, be addicted to truth. Then the Mind Lies book, we go through all of this stuff. Plenty, 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 plenty. Uh, of course, the truth course, we go whoa, all the way. Very, very deep stuff. But that comes after the Mind Lies. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Lots, lots more to go if you want to. So if you have a question that needs answering, come along to danielanswers.com.